So I got a chance to replay Doom 3 very recently. This is the BFG edition, by the way. And I remembered as I went through the story mode, there were a bunch of areas that were inaccessible because they're blocked off or you're not supposed to go there. And so I thought, let's do a video going to a bunch of these, you know, inaccessible areas of Doom 3. So the first one here is when you uh, see Dr. Betruger speak to Counselor Elliot Swan about the issues that are happening on Mars. And so I thought, I want to go inside that room and talk to Campbell and also to Elliot Swan. So this is the back room where they uh, go around the corner. And Campbell, does he want to give me the BFG? Let's talk. No, he just wants to show me his fancy case. All right. The small room they walk into is where they just disappear. Yeah, and they're gone. That's it. The door to the right is also locked. Now, when Petruger is talking to Elliot Swan in that same room, there's a laptop behind him, and I just wanted a better angle of that. And it is uh, small information about Artifact U1, which is the Soul Cube. All right. That's just a better angle. At the start of the game, you have to undergo a full body scan before you're allowed entry. So there's this office here, and I want to see the computer terminal in the corner, and it has these names. Mark Casian, Jacob Cruz, Alexander Pesh. Two security classified personnel. And there's this, I guess, person who's become a zombie. I just want to get a better angle of its face. So inside the room, this is what it looks like. Yeah, he's beyond saving at this point, and the animation just repeats. And here is uh, Sergeant Kelly when you first meet him. Um, his eyes are different. Whoa! If I talk to him, he teleports to the door, and his eyes change. And then he's going to zip back. Yep. And this is a comparison of Kelly's eyes before you meet him and during that conversation. Yeah, it looks different. Okay, so we got a different angle this time for the cutscene when you actually do meet him and he speaks to you. And his legs or his torso is twisting the other way? That is not natural. That was weird. All right. Then it shifts over here. Okay. Then he teleports there. All right. And then he changes there. And then goes back to this spot. Okay. And moving on to this area over here. There's a bunch of weapons in the back over there. And I want to see if I can get them. All right. We're inside. And let's see if we can uh, pick up this ammunition. Oh, I can. Nice. Nice. So, it is an actual item you can pick up. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, there's a plasma gun on the table. Oh, I took that too. Okay. Let's get as much ammo as we can get. Oh, that's cool. I just cleaned out the house, man. I took everything. There's also this room later on. You do access this area later on in this stage, but I want to access it right now and push that button ahead of time. Okay, so we're inside, and once you push this button, it's going to activate a big change in the game story where there's imps appearing and all of these soldiers turn into zombies. See, there's the cutscene, and if I turn around, there's a zombie, and he's awake, and he's shooting me. Yeah, other soldiers are zombies, but some civilians are not, as you can see in the back left section. And let's find the missing scientist. This is the one that's located in the old uh, decom facility. We're just getting a different angle while we see this cutscene. Oh, nice. And there you go. He is a zombie now. There's an imp here in the dark. Is he eating it? Well, he's doing the motion. I guess that's what it means. Hey, I found an issue of Game Hog. There's this imp holding the barrel. 
but if you shoot it, they will drop it. And if I shoot it again, like that, it actually moves. And I found the room where uh, Elliot Swan contacts Dr. Betruger on that little uh, terminal. And Campbell is just floating in the air for some reason. I don't know why. And he likes to show me his fancy case of the BFG inside, but doesn't want to give it to me. You can also use explosives to uh, toss Campbell's body all across the room and put him in very awkward positions for the cutscene, which is what I'm going to do. But not right there. So I moved his body. And let's go back to this part. As soon as you exit this elevator, the cutscene will begin with Elliot Swan contacting Dr. Petruger. And if I got the angle right, yep, there's uh, Campbell's body on the floor. And he's got no video. The call ended, but he's still talking to Petruger somehow. Then he looks over to Campbell, but Campbell is not there. When Elliot Swan finishes talking to Betruger, he looks to his left area, and then the case opens by itself because Campbell is not alive in that room. I did find them again in a separate area, and Campbell is like glitching forward slowly somehow. He's holding the BFG. I'm gonna shoot him and see if he can... Oh yeah, he drops the BFG. But you cannot access this area normally. And wow, big difference. You destroy Swan's body, but Campbell's body always stays around. This is a section in the game where you are allowed to get the BFG early in the game by shooting Campbell as he runs down a hall and makes a left around a corner. I just want to see what happens if they run down that hall. Ah, so they just disappear and that's pretty much it. There's no proper animation. I also found this zombie nudging its forehead against this fallen zombie. Maybe they're trying to say it's eating it? I don't know. I don't know why Elliot Swan and Campbell are inside the room where you fight the Vagary boss. They have no reason to be there, it's kind of strange. I mean, Elliot Swan looks really scared that a giant spider is right behind him. And looking at Campbell, his eyes have this weird look again, like he's possessed or dazed or tired or something. Yeah, it's really weird. Maybe he's looking at that hanging body up in the ceiling, perhaps. And here's what the Vagary boss looks like from the rear end. It's got some weird kind of creature there. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I really don't like spiders. And there's this door where as you approach it, there's this kind of creature that kind of pops out of the door in some weird nightmare vision. Yeah, that one. So let's go inside and have a look at it. I want to see the rest of its body or what's available to see. And oh, it's only a small section of the torso and the head. So that's what the face looks like. Okay. I always thought, was it like a different enemy or like a different version of a Hell Knight or something else? And there you go. Hey, I found uh, Swan and Campbell again in a different office that's already burning. You can actually talk to them or like make them turn around to face you and that's about it. Campbell aims his BFG at me with his weird eyes. Yeah, going crazy again. And Swan is like, yeah, he's scared again. I don't know why. He's always got this look on his face. I really don't know the purpose of these characters being here and just kind of standing around with those weird looking faces. I don't know. And this is an up close look of the pinky demon. I just wanted to see the detail and the animation on the character model because normally it moves too fast. You can't even see all of it. Yeah, it's pretty scary. And behind that pinky demon, there's this body just hanging around with its arms wide open. Yeah, he's just chilling. There's this section here where I wanted to explore the outside areas, but all these buildings are empty. Yeah, there's nothing inside. 
and my train arrived just in time. So these three pictures are different backgrounds they use for the outside area of Mars City. Yeah, they're very low res backgrounds, but yeah, I just wanted to show you. This is the part in the story where you have to get an item to charge up the teleporter and make it usable. Whoa, did you see that? The chair behind him moved on its own. That was weird. Whoa, this guy's floating with his legs. Whoa, his body is like... Whoa, he teleported back. Then he continues working like everything is completely normal. Okay. Ah, uh, this part, when the two Hell Knights come out of the portal and they attack you, and Betruger is actually up top, right here. If you get to this area, he does notice you and just kind of stares at you. Yeah. Meanwhile, the two Hell Knights are down below. You can shoot Betruger if you want. Yeah, he turns into a skeleton and then, like, just disappears, and here we are in Hell. Whoa, there's... Wait, is that normal? I can't remember if I saw that during my last playthrough. That was strange. That might be normal. Maybe because we're in hell, you know. But the last time I played this, maybe I rushed through this area and I didn't even see it. And we're up top. Yeah, that is really high. Yeah, there's not much else to see in this area. So I guess we'll move on. So this is the part where you get trapped inside the cage. And you go all the way down. And from here, the screen turns red until you re-enter the cage. This is what the cherub are doing if they don't even notice you. I think they're like resting or sleeping. Either way, these things are really scary. I think there's two or three sections in hell that has this area where these dark ghostly images are rising upward from the ground. I just liked it. The hell knights that appear during the hell stage look a bit different. They have new textures. As you can see their claws are now stained in red and their body is covered completely with these markings or glyphs. Other than that their animations and their attack patterns are still the same. And this is the Soul Cube, when it's protected by the Guardian. But this is a different perspective during the cutscene. That is one really big demon. Oh, by the way, when you reach level 100, you can unlock the Guardian as a special mount. Oh, this is the part when Campbell says his last words and then he dramatically passes away. Yeah, great acting. During the excavation of this site, the UAC did leave some video CDs, and one of them does mention that there could have been possible survivors at the end of the demonic invasion, and they said that they were unable to locate a specific map that could detail where the Martian survivors left afterwards, and this area is called the Room of Stars, so I was thinking maybe this was the map they were talking about. This entire area has these walls covered with these markings or glyphs or carvings or special text. And I've always been really interested in this kind of stuff when it comes to lost civilizations or ancient history. And I even looked at the book called The Making of Doom 3, hoping to find an answer or possible explanation or translation to all these symbols or text, but I did not find it. This is supposed to be the final resting place of the hero that used the Soul Cube and defeated the demons a long time ago during the invasion on Mars. And it seems like this was a very tall life form. So let's go up top because I want to see the face in full. And that is what it looks like. And if you're wondering if there is a body inside, no there is not. It is completely empty there is nothing inside this area. So, yeah, that's it. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's just walk through the wall like it's completely normal, right? And this is the end of the Cyber Demon, but a different angle during the cutscene. 
Marine just kind of appears there. The soul cube takes off and my legs are distorted somehow. <laughs> That's kind of strange. During the cutscene when the soul cube goes deeper into hell, the hole it goes into closes up. And I want to show you what it looks like down that hole. So let's jump in there and see what is down that area. And here we are inside the hole where the soul cube goes in after that cutscene. And let's make our way down here. And it is blocked off. And that's pretty much it. It is animated, but you can see that the textures are not aligned properly. And uh, that is where the soul cube goes afterwards. And here is the last thing that I want to show you. So during this cutscene, we get a brief glimpse of the Maledict. And it then flies away. And this area is actually accessible. Yes. It's connected to the same section of where you fight the cyber demon. It's just kind of branched off a little bit further away. And here we are. Let's look up and there is the Maledict just frozen in place. So this is the area that takes place during the final cutscene. And he's just like frozen in place. His body is also not a solid object. So if you try to shoot him, all those projectiles will go right through him. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.